Hey art friends, I picked out my top five favorite Halloween art lessons. So gather up your art supplies and come draw with us. Jack, what are we gonna draw today? A vampire folding surprise. Yeah, it's inside of a coffin when it's closed and then when you open it, it looks like the vampire's jumping out at you. Yeah. Maybe even some ghosts. We hope you're gonna follow along with us. You need something to draw with. We need a marker. Yep, and some paper and something to color with. Yeah, all right, all right let's start. Yes. First, we're gonna fold our paper in half. Take the top edge. Fold it down to the bottom, line it up, and crease it down the middle out to the corners. Mine's kind of lined up. It's a little off. That's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. Yep. Then we're going to take the top flap and fold it back up to the top, line it up, and then crease it down. Now let's flip over our paper, and we're going to do one more fold, just like that second one. And this is a guide fold. So this one just helps us know where the folding surprise is. Line it up and crease it down. But once you've finished creasing it, we're gonna unfold that flat. There we go, and then flatten it out. Yeah. And then we're gonna flip it back over. Then we can put scratch piece of paper underneath our drawing just to protect our table. It doesn't have to be red. We're ready to draw now. Yes. Let's use our markers. And the first thing we're drawing is the coffin. We'll start over here. We're going to draw a big box. We're going to start here uh, right on the fold and we're going to draw a line that comes down and we'll come over here to the other side of our paper and we're going to draw another line that matches the same length down. Then we're going to connect these two lines at the very bottom. We're going to draw a horizontal line to connect the bottom of those lines. Yeah. Okay, now we're gonna draw the top of the coffin. We're gonna draw a little line that goes past. Short line that goes up on each side, same length. I'm gonna turn my paper this way so it's a little easier. I'm gonna draw a straight line, horizontal line that comes down and connects to the other side. Cool, now we're gonna extend this line up a little higher, like that. It could go maybe even a little higher. There we go. And then on this side, we're going to draw a longer line, but it's diagonal. So we're going to come up like that and go past the height of the other side. Then we're going to, I'm going to turn my paper. It's a lot easier to draw long straight lines. We're yeah. going to connect these two lines together with a diagonal line coming across. Now, uh, you can leave it that way. <laughs> I'm going to turn it this way oh, again. Okay. And we're going to draw the lid. So this is just a line. You can draw this right on top of the fold. So half of that line can be on top and half of it can be below. And if you need to, you could go back over the line so that you make sure that it's on the top and also the bottom. Mine's a little wobbly. I'm going to straighten it out. There we go. Come all the way across. So it should look like that. When you open it up, you should see the lid up here and the bottom of our coffin down here at the bottom. Yeah. So let's fold it back up. Let's add a few more details to our coffin. Let's draw a little skull on the lid. Right here, I'm gonna draw a backwards C shape. Like that. And then we can draw the teeth. I'm gonna draw bumpy lines or little U shapes that connect. That's for the teeth. And then we could also draw the two little ovals for the eyes. <laughs> Let's also add cobwebs. I'm going to extend the bottom of the coffin out to the side. And then we can draw a curve that curves up. And we want to make sure that we don't curve up past the fold. There we go. And then we can add, let's add one more curve inside. And then we can add little lines coming across. That makes it look like a ladder. Let's repeat those same steps over here and we'll add another cobweb coming down and connecting to the ground and we can draw another curve. You can even add two curves if you want. And then the short little lines. I know I'm going faster because we're repeating, repeating. Yeah, repeating the same steps. So if you guys need to, remember you can pause the video if you need extra time. We did it. We finished our coffin. Now let's open it up. Oh, I love Halloween. Yeah, it's so much fun, especially when we do all the drawing, Halloween drawings. 
Now we got the lid up here at the top. It's like flying off of our coffin because the vampire is jumping out. Yeah. And we got the bottom down here. Let's add thickness to the bottom of our coffin. Now right here, let's see. We're gonna draw a short line first up on this side. We're not gonna go too far because we'll add a little extra later. This side over here, we're gonna draw just really short, but it's a diagonal line that matches up here. Matches this same angle. And we're, we're only going that far because we're gonna draw stuff coming out. Now, let's add a point right here in the corner and a point in the same, the same space away over here. These are guide points. I'm gonna turn my paper again. You don't have to if you don't want to, but we're going to connect these points together like that. You could even use a ruler if you want a super straight line. Yeah. Now we're ready to draw our vampire jumping out of the coffin. Let's first draw his head. We're gonna draw a big oval. So I'm gonna draw, he's gonna have a big giant head. We're gonna draw a big oval in, right in the middle of our paper. Now let's also draw his eyes. We could draw a circle over here. I also like to keep my hand on the paper because the folds pop up and sometimes that makes it difficult to draw on. There we go. And then let's add a smaller circle inside of each eye. Then we can also color in the big circle and leave that little circle white. What's your favorite part about Halloween? Candy. Cat yeah, I like candy too. I also like all the spooky stuff. Yeah. <laughs> now let's draw the mouth for our vampire. I'm going to draw a big circle, well, kind of a circle. It's flat on the top and the bottom, so it looks more like a mouth. And then let's draw the, the fangs on our vampire. Let's first draw a curve right here in the middle and leave space on each side. And then let's draw the thing on the left side. We'll draw a big V and then also on the right side to match the other tooth. Let's repeat the same step for the bottom. We're gonna draw the curve first, right in the middle, and then we'll draw an upside down V for the thing on each side. Yes, that looks really scary. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now let's color in the middle shape. Be sure to leave the teeth white. Now let's add the ears. We'll draw a short diagonal line out and then a curve down and connect back in. We can do the same thing over here. Diagonal line out and then a curve that comes down and connects to the head. Now let's add the hair. Let's draw a point right here in the middle of the forehead. Then we're gonna draw a curve that comes out of that point and we're gonna connect down to the ear. Let's do the same thing on the right side. We'll draw a curve that comes up and back down and connect to the ear. Now we'll color his hair black later. Let's move on to his hands. Let's draw a rainbow line, a short rainbow line. We're gonna draw him so he looks like he's grabbing, gonna grab somebody. Yeah, now let's draw his thumb over here. We're gonna draw a U shape coming around. Now this finger on this side will be bigger. We're gonna draw another U shape comes around. And we can also, let's go ahead and connect it into the thumb. Kind of looks like a hot dog shape. Yeah. Let's add more fingers or Cheeto. It looks like a <laughs> Cheeto. <laughs> I'm gonna add another finger that comes around like that. And then we can add, let's add even one more finger like that. Oh, it looks really cool. Let's repeat that same step over here. We'll draw the upside down U, and we can add the thumb, a U, regular U shape, a bigger U shape for the finger, and let's connect all the way over to the other side and complete the Cheeto. <laughs> <laughs> now we're <laughs> gonna draw the rest of the fingers. This one is like the letter J comes up kind of high, and then the last finger is just a little U down at the bottom. Now we got his Cheeto fingers all done. Let's add <laughs> the cloak and also his body. First, let's draw a diagonal line that connects the finger to his head, 
and we'll do the same over here. And then we're going to draw a curve. It's going to start here and we're going to draw, it's kind of like a rainbow line or an upside down U. And then we'll add one more that comes into the coffin. It looks like a bat wing. Let's repeat that same shape over here. Draw that rainbow line upside down U and then another one comes in and connects to the coffin. Now let's draw his body. We'll start over here and we're going to draw two lines that come down into the coffin. Then we could draw his waist for the bottom of his shirt. We could also draw his collar. Let's draw an upside down V. And then we can connect the outside of the V back to his chin on each side. And then we can add his tie right here, or I'm not sure, his fancy tie. We'll draw a tall upside down V and then short lines out on each side. And then let's connect that short line back up to his collar. Uh, now, what's our coffin missing? Ghosts. Yeah, lots of ghosts. Let's start here and we'll draw a shape. We're going to start by coming out of his head. And we want to make sure that we don't draw this ghost higher than the top fold. That's what, That way it's hidden when it's folded up. Okay, let's curve around like this. And then we're going to come back in and connect to the vampire. Oh, big or, Cheeto. <laughs> Those look like a big Cheeto. Now well, we got to add the face. Let's draw an oval shape for each eye. And then we could also add a bigger oval for the mouth. I'm going to go ahead and color those in. Good job. Let's do the same thing over here. This time I'm going to draw the ghost lower. And this will be really fun because we're going to use overlapping. So I'm going to start here, maybe a little lower on his head. We'll come up curve around and then this time I'm going to come all the way under his hand and then back into the coffin. Yeah. And then we can add this spooky face, ghost face and an oval for the mouth and then color in those shapes also. Let's add one more ghost. Maybe this one's friendly. This one's <laughs> just popping out over the top of his head. <laughs> we could draw the ovals for his eyes and then maybe a smile. There you go. One friendly ghost. We're almost done. Down here at the bottom, we need to finish the coffin. So up here, we can draw this line that kind of matches the height of the lid up here at the top. And then we can also draw the thickness coming up like that. And maybe this one comes in. If you have enough room, you could really add the back of the coffin too. And then over here, we can finish this diagonal line coming up and connecting to the ghost. And then also that thickness or the inside of the coffin that matches. We did it. We finished drawing our fully in surprise. But we still need to color it. Yeah, this part we're, we'll fast forward, but at the end you can pause the video to match the same coloring. You ready to fast forward? Yeah. Jack, we did it. We finished coloring our drawing. It looks awesome, all folded up. Ugh, you don't know what's going to come out of it. Yeah, uh, no. But, well, we do. But yeah. If you show this to somebody, they're going to be surprised when you open it. Three, two, two one. one. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that was a good scary laugh, Jack. Thanks. We added ghosts, but you guys could add whatever you want. You like could bats. Yeah, you could add bats. You could, oh, we should add bats. Yeah. You could also add candy and other scary things coming out of your coffin. You, you could, could even add the other <laughs> scary things. <laughs> candy can be scary. You could completely change this lesson and make something else pop out of your coffin. Yeah. It could be a zombie. It could just be ghosts. What else? Oh, even a witch. <laughs> that would be funny. You can do a stack of pumpkins. Oh, you could do a lot of pumpkins exploding. That would be awesome. We hope you had a lot of fun drawing your Halloween folding surprise. We do. We hope you had a lot of fun and we hope you have fun adding more things inside of the surprise. Yes. We love drawing with you guys and we'll see you later, our friends. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>
Ha! Hey, our friends, in this lesson, we're going to draw a folding surprise. When it's folded, it's going to be a gravestone. Yep. And then when you unfold it, what's going to be inside? A skeleton. Yeah, it's going to be really cool. We hope you're going to follow along with us. You need something to draw with. We're going to use markers, some paper, and something to color with. Yeah, you don't have to use markers if you don't want to, right? Yeah, you can <laughs> use a pencil. Yeah. We're first going to fold our paper in half. We're going to take the top edge and fold it down to the bottom. We've got to do the folding surprise first, right? Yeah. Or the folding part of the folding surprise. <laughs> you go line it up, crease it down the middle, and then out to the edges. Yeah. Then we're going to take this top edge, top flap, and we're going to fold that back up to the top. And line it up, and then down the middle, and out to the edges. Now let's flip it over, and we'll do that fold one more time. Take the top flap, fold it up, now, if you guys need more time, if we're going too fast, remember you can pause the video. Now we're going to take that last fold and we're going to unfold it and then flip it over. Now we have some scratch paper that we're going to put under our drawing paper so that our marker doesn't bleed through and get onto the table. Right, we just use red because it's easier to see on the camera, but you can use whatever scratch paper you have around your house. Now we're going to first draw the ground, and we're going to draw the ground below the fold, down here at the bottom. I'm going to draw a bumpy line. We're going to draw dirt. And come over it like that. Yeah, good job. Now we're going to draw the tombstone. We're going to draw two lines that come up. Now we've done a folding surprise like this, where we drew a tombstone, and then there are ghosts behind it. This time we're going to draw the same kind of steps, but when you unfold it, the skeleton's going to be there. It's going to be really cool. Now these two lines went up to the fold, and then we stop. Now we're going to draw the top of the tombstone. We're going to draw a U-shape, comes over like this, and connects to the other side. All right, we finished drawing the tombstone. Let's unfold our paper. We can flatten it out too, so it's easier to draw on. When we're doing the folding surprise, we want to make sure that we draw everything in between the top fold and the bottom fold. We want to make sure that we don't draw outside of those folds because when it's folded up, then you'll be able to see it. Yeah. All right, so we're first going to draw the skeleton's head up here at the top. So we'll start here on the left side, and we're going to curve in, and we'll curve in over here on the right side also. Yeah, and then we can draw his teeth. I'm going to draw bumpy U-shaped lines that come over and connect to the other side. Now we're going to draw his eyes. I'm going to draw a big circle, and we want to make sure that this circle is underneath the fold. Make sure that you don't draw it above the fold, or else you'll see the eyes when you close it up like this. See how it's folded? Mm -hmm. It disappears, and then when it's open, you can see it. All right, now inside, I'm going to draw another circle. And also over here on this side. And then let's color in the small circle. Next, let's draw the nose. I'm going to draw an upside down V. And then we'll connect the bottom. I'm going to draw another line inside and then color in the top shape. All right, now let's jump down here and we'll draw the rest of the tombstone again to complete that shape down at the bottom. Now we're going to draw the skeleton coming out from behind the tombstone. We're going to draw his ribs next. So I'm going to draw a big U shape. He's going to be so cool. Next, let's draw the bone in the middle of his chest. I think that's called the sternum. So it's another U shape. Then we're going to draw a curve coming up, touching the bottom of that U-shape, and then back down. Yeah, now let's draw the ribs. On each side, we're going to draw curves that come up to his head, and we'll do the same thing on the right side. Go all the way up, and I'm drawing him curves so that he looks more 3D. That looks awesome, Jack. Now we can draw his backbone. Let's draw two lines coming down. And then let's draw little lines going up. 
Next, let's color in these two triangle shapes on each side of his backbone. Next, we're gonna extend his backbone down further. I'm gonna go a little pretty far. There we go. And then right here at the bottom, we'll connect those lines and I'm gonna draw another short line across. All right, now let's draw his hip bones. We're gonna draw a curve underneath the backbone. Now let's draw another curve, except it's gonna go the other way. Now we're gonna connect the right side and also, or the left side and also the right side. Sometimes I get my sides mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> now let's draw a circle or an oval on each side and then color in those shapes. All right, cool, now we got his body all done. Let's draw his legs and also his arms. I'm first gonna draw a curve, or it looks like a letter C. Then I'm gonna draw two lines coming up, and then we'll draw a curve at the end, or backward C. Okay, now we're gonna draw another bone just like that, but going down. So I'm gonna draw, it looks like an upside down C. Then we'll draw the two lines coming down. And then a curve or a, another C shape at the bottom. Now we're going to repeat those same steps, but over here for his other leg. So we're going to come back and draw his feet later. We'll draw a backward C. Then I'm going to draw two lines coming out from the C. And then we'll connect those two lines with a, another letter C. Okay, let's do the same thing, except we're gonna have this bone go behind the tombstone. So we'll draw upside down C, and then the two lines coming down and connecting to the tombstone. Looks like he's jumping. Yeah. All right, now let's draw his arm up here. We're gonna repeat all of the same steps. So I'm gonna go a little faster. I'm gonna draw the C shape, two lines coming down, and then another C shape, and then I'm gonna draw Another bone coming up. And another line and then connect at the end with the C. Now this one gets a little close to that top fold, so maybe we'll have the hand aim down. All right, now let's come over here. And this time we're gonna draw the bones a little different. I'm gonna draw them coming down. Draw a C at the end. This one is gonna aim straight out to the side, and that's so that we can draw them hanging on to a pumpkin. Remember to pause the video if you need extra time. All right, Jack, now let's add the feet. We're just gonna keep it really simple. We're gonna draw an upside down U shape, and then connect the end. Then we'll draw a little curve inside. And we can also draw another, let's draw another curve. And then let's draw lines coming out like that. Okay, and then at the very end, let's draw little circles or ovals for the toes. That's pretty simple, right? Yeah. And kind of fun. Let's do the same thing up here, but a slightly different. We're gonna draw the U shape. Upside down U shape. Then we're gonna draw the line connecting it. We'll do that same little curve. This time, let's just add a couple lines coming down. Then we're gonna draw the thumb sticking out to the side. And then I'm gonna draw three more ovals right here. Oh, that looks really cool. Now let's draw his hand over here on this side. So we'll draw a sideways U shape. Connect the side. Draw a little curve and two lines for the bones in the hand. And then we'll draw those oval shapes. And we're gonna leave the thumb off on this side because we're gonna draw a pumpkin. So I'm gonna draw a big oval shape coming up like this. Make sure that the oval doesn't go past the fold up here at the top. This is for the pumpkin he's holding. <laughs> then we could draw two lines coming out for the stem. 
Am I going too fast for you? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I bet I'm going too fast for our friends too. So remember, I'm going to say it again. You can pause the video if you need extra time. All right. Now we got the, the stem finished. Let's, I'm going to draw little eyes. And then I'm going to draw a straight line for the top of the mouth <laughs> and a big curve for the bottom of the mouth. It's a happy pumpkin. Yeah. We could also add another curve inside to make it look more 3D. And then I'm gonna color in that center shape. All right, we finished drawing our skeleton folding surprise, except we still need to do the best part. Color it. Yeah, we need to color it. This part we're gonna fast forward one more time, but at the end, you guys can pause the video to match the same color. All right, Jack, we did it. We finished coloring our folding surprise. And I especially love the extra little details you added. Yeah. A little skull on the tombstone and also a spider on top of the skeleton head. <laughs> I love that when you open it up, he's really up here. And I love the extra spiders and the cobwebs, especially the one in the armpit. Yeah. You can also use your own creativity and add even more things inside of the surprise. Just make sure that they're above the bottom fold and below the top fold. That way when you fold it up, they're hidden. And then when you open it, you see them. Yeah, you can see them. We hope you had a lot of fun drawing your folding surprise. Yeah, we did. We hope you had a lot of fun and we hope you have fun adding more things to your drawing. We'll see you later, our friends. Goodbye. Hey, our friends, we're so glad you're with us today. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to draw a zombie hand coming out of the ground. Roar. <laughs> Roar. All right, checkers, you got your marker. Yeah. All right, we hope you're gonna follow along with us. If we go too fast, you can always- Pause the video. Yes, you can always pause the video and you don't have to use a Sharpie if you don't want to, but we love using Sharpies. Sharpies. Yeah. <laughs> the lines show up really dark and I think it's more fun to draw than it is to erase. Yeah. All right, you ready to start? Yeah. We're also gonna use oil pastels to color our zombie hands at the end. We're gonna use yellow for his fingernails and some shading on the bones. Red for the blood, green for shading, this dark green's for shading, the light green is for his skin color, and then brown for the dirt. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll put that off to the side. We're gonna use our markers first. We have our paper vertical so that we can draw his hand coming out of the ground and drawing it really tall, and we're gonna fill up the paper. Kay. Right in the middle of the paper, we're gonna draw his palm. And see, see my palm right here? It's kind of a square shape. So we're gonna draw a rounded square shape right in the middle of our paper. Is that a cool shape? Yes. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to look just like this. There you go. Just do your best and we can always practice, right? Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna draw his thumb and the rest of his fingers. So we're gonna draw his thumb coming out of this side first. We're gonna draw a line, an L shape. Okay, so there's his thumb. It's gonna be bent. Yeah, now we're gonna draw the other side of his thumb comes around like that. So we've got this upside down U shape and then we're gonna connect it into the palm. All right, now let's draw his first finger. We're gonna draw an upside down U shape, but it's not gonna come all the way down. We're gonna just stop right there. Good, and then we're gonna draw the rest of his finger. It's gonna curl around and back up. So it's starting to look like a hand, so this yeah. is like his first finger and it's bent, yes. And then we're gonna draw the other side of his finger, like that. Okay, now we're gonna draw the next finger. We're gonna come up, we're gonna imagine it going behind this, this finger, and we're gonna draw it coming back down, a lot like the first one. Good, now we'll curl back around. And then we'll draw that other line for the other side of his finger coming down. Is it looking like a hand? Yes. All right, we got two more fingers to draw. This one's gonna come out. We're gonna come behind this finger right here. And this one's maybe pointed this way more. It's not gonna come straight down. There we go. And then we're gonna curl it back in. And then connect it back to the palm. Okay, the last little finger is going to be sticking out to the side right here. So we're going to draw an upside down L or an A shape. 
and then we'll curve his little finger back in and then connect it just like we did with the other fingers. That was pretty easy, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. We got a simple hand. Now let's draw the fingernails on it. Okay. Let's draw the first thumb fingernail right here and we're just going to draw like a backwards C shape. Now on this first finger, let's draw a U shape. And then we'll connect the top. And then we'll do the same thing on this finger, U shape, connect the top. Now on this one, we're gonna draw a sideways U shape since his finger's pointing off to the side. And then connect the top. And then a U shape down here on his little finger and connect the top. Good. Yeah, there you go. Now on the fingernails, let's add gross details. Maybe this fingernail is broken. Chip. And then he's got, yeah, or a chip. And he's got cracks in these fingernails. And maybe this fingernail is chipped also. And then down here we can draw another crack in that fingernail. Okay, now let's add more details. Let's add some wrinkles to his fingers. See how yeah. when you bend your fingers, there's little wrinkles. So let's add those details in here. We'll add one right here on his thumb. And we can add a couple on this finger. Add some on this one. I'm gonna add a couple over here and one on the little finger. Now let's draw the wrinkles on his palm. See how you have a round one right here and then I have a couple up here on the top. So let's draw the round one first. Round wrinkle. And then we can draw another wrinkle up here. All right, now we're gonna draw the ground down here at the bottom and then we can draw the wrist and his arm. So down here, we're gonna draw a bumpy line and we want to make it look like dirt. So some lines are big bumps and little bumps. Mix it up. Cool, now we're gonna draw the wrist. So on this side, let's draw a line straight down and we're gonna start right here and we're gonna come down and into the ground. Cool, now we're gonna start over here and we're gonna come down, but not don't go all the way, just go down maybe halfway or a quarter of the way. And then we're gonna draw a jagged line. So his skin is gonna be torn and you can see the bone inside. Okay. Is that gross? <laughs> so I drew a little M shape and then we're gonna come back down almost all the way to the bottom. And then let's draw a zigzag over here This zigzag comes out almost as far as the side of his arm so that we can finish the arm coming down. That looks really gross. It looks like somebody took a big giant bite out of his arm. Okay, let's draw the bone in there. Okay. Okay, we're gonna start up here and we're gonna draw a line that comes down and connects to the bottom. And then we're gonna draw another line right next to it that comes down and connects to the bottom also. Perfect. Now right here, let's connect the skin into the bone <laughs> and we'll do the same thing on the bottom. All right, now let's do another tear in his skin. So we're gonna draw like an A shape right here. And then let's draw a W. We're gonna come down, up, down, and then back up, really big W. Uh, looks really cool. Okay, now we're gonna draw a line inside of here for his other bone. Cool. Okay, now let's add wrinkles to his wrist. I'm gonna add two wrinkles on this side and maybe two little ones on the other side. That looks really disgusting, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> okay, let's add some dirt falling down from his fingers. So I'm gonna add little rocks some big and some little coming down from his thumb and maybe there's one down here also. Yeah, now we're gonna draw some rocks over here on this side. Draw a little one, big one, and then maybe two down here. A little one and a bigger one right here. And then look, we can also add some rocks down here too. Let's add some in the dirt. And add a big one, a little one, and maybe even a little smaller one over here. 
We did it, man. He looks really cool. Did you have fun? Yes. Okay, what should we do next? Color it. Okay, let's get our oil pastels. We'll put our markers off to the side. In this part, we're going to fast forward, and then we'll add shading at the very end. Okay. So you guys can pause the video once we finish coloring so that you can match the same coloring that we did. You ready to fast forward? Yeah. Let's do it right yeah. now. Cool checkers, we got all the coloring done. Now you guys at home can pause the video to match the coloring. We got green for his skin, we have the red in there for the inside of his hand, the, all the bloody parts, yeah. and then we left white on the bones, and then we colored brown for the dirt and yellow for his fingernails. Kay. Let's get our yellow, and we're gonna add a little shadow on the top of the bone. See how that looks like a shadow now? Yeah. It looks more 3D, it looks like it's behind the skin. And we can add the shadow over on this side also. Now we're gonna switch to our dark green and we're gonna add shadows on the hand. So on each of the wrinkles, let's go in and we can add a little shadow on all the wrinkles. Cool, now we're gonna add more shadows. We're gonna add a shadow on the bottom of his thumb. We'll just do the bottom edge. Good, and then we're gonna add a shadow under each of the fingers. So right here, on the bottom side of the finger, we'll add a shadow. And we can add that same shadow to all of the fingers. Let's add one more shadow down here on the side of his arm, and up here, and also on this side of his arm. Checkers, man, good job. You did awesome on coloring your zombie hand. Now the last step that we did was we went around the outside of our hand with a thicker black line so that it looks like it's really popping out of the paper. Yeah. Literally looks like it's sticking right out. What was your favorite part? Drawing the bones. The bones sticking out of his skin? Yes. That was probably my favorite part too and the disgusting fingernails. Yeah. <laughs> we hope you had a lot of fun drawing and coloring your zombie hands with us. It was a lot of fun shading too. Yeah. And the shading really makes it look 3D and that makes it look like it's popping out of the paper too. Yeah. And remember, if your drawings don't look exactly like ours, it's okay because the most important thing is to have fun. Yes, to have fun. And we'll see you later, our friends. Goodbye. Bye. Say we're gonna be drawing a zombie head. Yeah, it's gonna be super awesome. We hope you're gonna follow along with us. You got a marker or something to draw with, and some papers. Paper and something. Colored, color with. Yeah, something to color with at the very end. Now, if you haven't already, be sure to check out our zombie hand coming out of the ground. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> be sure to check it out. Now, today's gonna be awesome because we're just drawing a really cool big zombie head. Coming out of the ground. No. All right, you ready to start? <laughs> First step, let's draw our zombie's eyes right in the middle of our paper and a little towards the top so that we have room for his mouth down here at the bottom. Now, we're not going to draw circles. We're going to draw them so they look like they've been squashed a few times. So I'm going to draw a funny shape over here for his, his uh, right eye and then another one over here for his left eye. <laughs> yeah, those are perfect shapes. <laughs> Now let's draw his nostrils. We're, we're gonna draw him, he's gonna look like his nose has been eaten away. So we're gonna draw two ovals, like this. Yeah. Awesome, now let's draw his mouth shape, and we're gonna draw an upside down uh, U, like this. And his mouth is gonna be so far open, you can see his gums. And then down at the bottom, let's connect it. Oh, he's already looking scary. That's a scary face, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> now let's draw his pupils up here at the top. We're gonna draw them rolling back in his skull. So we're just gonna draw them at the very top. And then we can draw also another, let's draw another smaller circle or oval for the highlight in his pupil. And then let's come back in and color in the big spot, the big part of his pupil, but leave that small little circle white for the highlight. Then on each nostril, we're gonna draw another circle or a line that comes out and curves around like this, so it looks more 3D. 
Like you can see the inside of his skull. <laughs> yeah. Now let's draw his teeth and his gums. On the side, the left side over here, we're gonna draw a line that comes in like this and then back out. Almost looks like a sideways V. And then we'll do the same thing, except the opposite direction on the right side. Now in the middle, let's draw a line right down the middle to split his teeth. And then we're gonna draw another line over here on the left and another line on the right. Then we're gonna draw one more line on each side and we're gonna repeat or kind of match that same direction. Looks like a V, sideways V. And do the same thing over here. Next, we can separate the top teeth from the bottom teeth. So first, let's draw a line that comes in on each side. And then we want them to look crooked. So I'm gonna draw another line that goes up or down on the other side. And then I'm gonna draw another line here and maybe one up higher. He's got crooked teeth. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're gonna draw the top of his teeth and we're gonna draw upside down U's to connect each of the teeth. So then you can see his gums above his teeth. Does that look gross? Yeah, it does. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the bottom except reverse it upside down. We're gonna draw the regular U shape to connect each tooth. <laughs> that looks really cool. Now let's color in the left side and also the right. Next, let's draw the outside shape of his head. We're gonna start right here next to his eye and we're gonna draw a wobbly line and also his cheek. So we're, then we're gonna come in like that and we'll do the same thing over here on this side. Come in for his cheek, bone, and then down. Yeah. <laughs> kind of looks like a skeleton or skull because he's so old and decaying. Yeah. It, all you can see is a skull shape. Then we're gonna draw his jaw. So we're gonna start right here under his cheek and we're gonna come down and then we're gonna make his chin. Oh, and it can be wobbly. Come back over here and then draw into his cheekbone. Oh, it looks so cool. Draw a little bump down here for his chin. And I come over and finish his right cheek. Ah! <laughs> and the more wobbly you make the lines, the cooler he looks. Yeah. Good job, dude. Next, let's draw the top of his head, we're going to draw, we're going to continue this line over the top like this, and then we're going to stop. Don't go all the way over and connect it because we're going to leave part of it missing so we can see his brain sticking brains. out. Brains. Okay, we're going to draw another curve right here. We're going to draw a line that comes over, and notice how I didn't connect it. I left a little gap. Okay, now let's draw the bumpy brain line. We're going to start right here. We're going to draw bumps like this, make it look gross. You don't want the same shape or the same type of bumpy line. Make it messy. It looks like his brain is super squishy. Yeah. <laughs> Next, we're gonna connect his skull into his brain like that and also over here on this side. Now it looks 3D. Right here, let's draw a curve that comes around upside down you, and we'll do the same thing over here, and then we're gonna color that in. So it looks like you can see inside his head. <laughs> Super gross. Next, let's draw his ears. We're gonna draw a upside down you over here, and also on the right side. Then we're gonna draw a line, watch this, it's gonna come in, and then back out, and then connect it into his head. And we'll do the same thing over here. In, back out for his earlobes, and then back in to the skull or head. Now we have our zombies look really cool. We've got the general shape to his head, except he's missing all the cool details that's gonna make him look even scarier. Yeah. First, let's start with his ears. We're gonna draw the inside of his ear. We're gonna draw a line that comes around, down, and you could draw this wobbly so it looks even grosser. And if we're going too fast, you can also pause the video Pause the video if you need more time. Next, let's draw a curve that connects the top down to the bottom, and we can color that in so you can see inside his ear. Let's repeat those same steps, but flip it over here on the right ear. Draw upside down U, but then wobbly, and 
<laughs> then we can draw that curve for the inside of his ear and then color it in. Next, let's jump up here to his brain and we're going to add little lines inside of his brain. So I'm going to draw a line and it could be anywhere. It doesn't have to look exactly the same. And then I'm going to draw two lines that come out, almost looks like a tree branch. Then I'm going to draw a line that comes out of his skull and do the same thing. Little branches that come out. And then we'll do another one coming the other direction. And this part really doesn't have to look exactly the same because brains just look weird. Yeah. All right. Okay, now let's add, we're going to draw the skin that's kind of peeling away from his skull. So I'm going to draw a jagged line that goes over his eye. And this can be messy. And zigzag back and forth until you connect up to the top. Now let's draw a bunch of wrinkles. I'm going to first start by drawing part of his eye coming away from his eyeball. And then we can draw another wrinkle up here at the top. And I'm going to draw another also wrinkle coming down underneath his eye. Let's do that same thing over here. I'm going to draw another kind of line that comes out and then comes back in. Then we can draw a wrinkle that's over his eye and then down underneath his eye. Then we can also draw wrinkles that go over the top of his nostrils. I'm going to draw a big one and also a small one. Next, let's draw some wrinkles on his cheek. I'm going to draw them coming down from his cheek and maybe just one over here on this side. And then let's draw wrinkles coming down on the side of his mouth. Let's also draw a bunch of whiskers. I'm going to draw three lines here and maybe like four here on his chin, three down here. And you guys can just add as many or as little as you want. I'm also going to add those whiskers up here on the top of his head. All right, Jack, I think we got most of the details, except we, I think we're missing one last thing. A worm. Yeah, we need to draw a worm coming out of his skull. We're going to draw a little curve right here. This is, it's coming out of the, his skin. This is the gross part. Then we're going to draw a wavy line. So we're going to start here on the top of that curve. I'm going to draw a wavy line. So a wiggly worm. And then we're going to curve back around and then we're going to match that wiggly line coming back into the first curve we drew. Oh, that looks disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> then we need to draw the little lines on our worm. So I'm going to draw them curved. Do you see how yeah. that makes them look more 3D if you draw them curved, not straight. Oh, it's so gross. And then right here on this curve, I'm going to draw I'm going to draw a curve that comes around, completes it, and then color it in so it looks like a hole. Oh, sick. <laughs> this, I think, is maybe one of my new favorite drawing lessons. Yeah. <laughs> I like the little eye you added to your worm. Yeah. Now, he looks awesome, but he's going to look even cooler once we do what? Color him. Color him. Now, this part we're going to fast forward, but at the end, you guys can pause it to match the same coloring. You ready to fast forward? Yes. Jack, we finished coloring our zombie heads and it looks so amazing. much. Yeah, it looks amazing. It looks way better colored in. I hope you guys at home are going to take time, pause the video, and you can match the same coloring that we did, or you can use your imagination, color your zombies any way you want. You can even add extra details like more worms maybe coming out of his ears. Yeah. You could also draw the rest of his neck coming down, and you can also draw a background. Maybe there's a graveyard back there with four zombies coming yeah. out of the grave. You could also draw the hand. Oh, yeah. Zombie hand you, in the background. That would be really tricky, but I bet that would look awesome. You draw two zombie hands coming yeah. out behind. <laughs> we hope you had a lot of fun following along with us. Be sure to check out that zombie hand lesson. It was so much fun. Yeah, it was. But I think this one was more fun. Yeah. We'll see you later, our friends. Goodbye. Goodbye.
Hey, our friends, today we're going to be drawing a zombie shark. Yeah, it's going to be really cool. We hope you're going to follow along with us. You need something to draw with. We're going to use markers, some paper, and something to color with. Yeah, let's get started. Just We have our paper horizontal so that we can draw the shark really big and long. We're going to first start by drawing his mouth. We're going to start over here, and we're going to draw a curve. And we can draw our lines really bumpy and wobbly because he looks gross. And... Like a monster. Yes. Zombie. <laughs> like a zombie. Yeah, zombie monster. Yeah, now we're going to draw a line coming back for the bottom of his jaw. This is the top of his mouth. This is the bottom. Now let's draw some really cool shark teeth inside. I'm just going to draw a zigzag line coming back. And I'm also going to draw the big shark teeth on the bottom. <laughs> Good job. Now we're going to draw another curve that comes back like this. This is for the little pieces, I don't know, uh, skin or muscle inside of his mouth that you can see back at the back of his jaw. Yeah, cool. Now let's draw the front of his nose. We're going to draw a curve coming up. Then we're going to draw it coming back. Ew, I'm kind of drawing it pointy. That's okay. <laughs> I really like that both of our drawings are different. They both look awesome, and I hope their drawings look different too. Yeah. Because the most important thing is have fun. And to practice. Practice. All right, let's keep going. We're going to draw a, a bite out of the top of his head. So I'm just drawing like U shapes that are connected together. And we're going to draw his brain inside of here. So now let's draw popcorn line coming across. I don't think shark brains are that big, but... That's okay. Yeah, they're probably like <laughs> tiny, tiny, tiny. <laughs> yeah, probably. All right, let's draw. Let's draw the rest of his back after the bite. Then we're gonna draw his shark fin, the big top, scary part coming back. And then we're gonna draw a line coming back down. Then we're gonna draw another bite mark in his uh, fin, his top fin. Dorsal fin, I think is what it's called. Now we're just going to draw a little line coming back for the rest of his back. And then we're going to draw another bite. Man, this shark has seen better days. He's really roughed up. We're going to draw another, just a bunch of U's connected together. Yeah, now this is going to be his spine. Now we're going to draw a short line coming back for the rest of his tail. Yeah, I'm going to draw it even a little further back. Now let's draw his tail. We're going to draw a curve coming up almost and to the end of the paper. Now let's come back over here and let's draw his belly. We're going to draw, well, let's draw the bottom of his jaw first. We'll draw a short line coming forward. Then we're going to draw the underside of his jaw. I'm going to draw it really wobbly. Then right here we're going to draw another line for his belly coming back further. Then we'll draw his fins. We're going to draw another curve that comes down, kind of similar to the top fin. We'll come back up. We're going to draw another bite or a tear in this one. So I'm going to draw a bunch of sideways U's like this. Now we're going to draw the rest of his fin coming back up further. Now we're going to draw the rest of his belly coming back further. Then we're going to draw a little side fin. Then we're going to draw the rest of his tail. So we're going to imagine the belly coming back and coming up to this top, close to the top of his body. Yeah. Then we could draw a short line coming down. Then let's add another smaller bite right here on the end of his tail and we'll draw another short line coming back further. All right, cool. Let's connect the top down to the bottom. But first, before we go all the way down, let's stop and then we'll add another bite mark <laughs> right on the end. And he's been eaten up. All right. And then we're, <laughs> we're going to draw a line, a curve that comes down and then it's going to come out. Then there's a little bend in that line to finish the tail. All right, Jackie looks really cool, but let's add a few more details. Let's add his spine back here. We're going to draw a line inside of this bite. 
We'll draw another one right below that. And then let's add little lines in between each vertebrae. Oh, and then we're gonna add U shapes at the bottom of each vertebrae. Now let's add bones in his fins. We're gonna draw a little curve inside of the bite. Then let's add a long U shape. And I'm gonna add another long U shape below that one and one more below that one. Next, let's draw his eye. We're gonna draw a really angry eye. I'm gonna draw a sideways V. And then at the back, we're gonna connect it. <laughs> Let's draw a U shape underneath his eye. Usually the top of the shark is gray or like a darker color and their bellies are white. Let's draw a line that separates those two. So I'm gonna start at the nose, come back and connect to the eye. Then behind the eye, we're gonna come down and connect to the fin. Then we'll start here behind the fin connect to this little fin on his tail and then we'll come up and almost connect to the end of his tail. Then back here we're going to connect it to the front of the tail. Let's make him look more 3D. We'll add a second fin and also a second big fin up here for his side fins. Let's give him four gills right behind his eyes. Let's also add a small little fin behind that bite mark and also down here on the bottom of his tail. Oh my gosh, he's looking really cool. Now let's also give him a big huge tear right here on the side of his body. So I'm gonna draw a wiggly jagged line and then I'm gonna draw another jagged line above it. I'm gonna repeat that same step for another one that's maybe a little smaller underneath, and one more that's even smaller underneath that one. All right, Jack, we did it. We finished drawing our sharks. They look so cool. Now we still need to do one more thing to make them look even cooler. What is it? Color it. Yeah, we need to color them. This part we're gonna fast forward, but at the end, you guys can pause the video to match the same coloring. Or use your own creativity, color your drawings any way you want. You ready to fast forward? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Jack, great job on coloring your zombie shark. And do you think you look so much better colored in? Yes. And also, you got to tell me what your favorite part of your drawing is. Probably the brain. <laughs> I think I like the brain or, or the spine. Oh, the spine. Yeah, brain. either one. It's, yeah, or the mouth. Or the mouth, yeah, or, or the fin. Or, or maybe the whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> or that too. We hope you had a lot of fun drawing your zombie shark. Yeah, we do. We hope you had a lot of fun, and we hope you use your own creativity to color your sharks any way you want, even add more cool stuff. Maybe even draw a background. That would be awesome. Yeah, that would. See you later, our friends. Goodbye. Goodbye.